Mad Max snowplow. fire in your workshop and then we'll uh, start a bunch of welding today TIG welding you ready for the squeal oh. Oh, yeah. using a saber saw for cutting quarter inch mild steel not my uh, favorite choice, but it's workable. Uh, keep my hand on the uh, grip here. Can't see my hand up here. Uh, keep tightening the clamp because they tend to vibrate loose very quickly. It keeps cutting. Be careful not to uh, overheat the blade. Yeah. Sometimes it's just worthwhile to uh, model something up. In this case, the front of the snowplow. <laughs> you know, I had in my mind how I was doing this uh, mechanism with these uh, links out here. With the uh, dual articulation here which would allow it to rack a little bit under control and uh, there'll be some mechanisms over the top of each one of these that allow me to adjust the relationship between this and this in terms of angle but as I got thinking about it I wasn't really sure if when I did that if they would be able to independently to create the rack so here's the Here's the brace that goes across, and this represents, that will be a small angle, much smaller than this, but, you know, this was easy to grab. I just grabbed some scrap, scrap pieces and nailed them together so I could check the articulation. Now, of course, if you didn't have any control pieces here, what would happen is, you know, you get the force in the front here, it would just push this whole thing up like that, okay? If you have them locked, and you have these locked in place, then the whole thing would, you know, work just like that. So, you know, then you get the nice float. It just doesn't angle. Now I'd like to have a way for it to automatically angle. Um, unfortunately, due to the forces of the snow and everything could cause it to rise up and not press against the snow in one area. So I need to have a way of kind of manually adjusting this uh, rack angle, I'm going to call it. So as I, as I played with this, I could hold one to a certain angular relationship here and then if this other one was adjusted otherwise, it actually does seem to create the, uh, the rack that I want. So I should be able to get some adjustment. I don't need a lot from side to side. So under certain, certain situations, I can go up and there'll be a bolt on each side. And I go up with a uh, socket on my uh, uh, what are you, impact driver and just zzzz. Zit, I can adjust, you know, either one and get exactly the angle I want if I'm having problems getting the snow off of one area. If it slopes too much and my tractor's not adjusting for it, then, uh, you know, I can make that adjustment. If you can spend a few minutes up front to save hours at the back end, yeah, it's well worth it. Large part of welding is the setup. For uh, boring holes, especially large holes in small pieces, see these things are one inch by one inch, and I have a nine sixteenths inch hole in the center of each one. So well, rather than cutting, obviously you don't cut the little squares first and try to drill them out. That would be uh, very dangerous. So <laughs> start out with a nice piece of stock that I can really get some good leverage on. Two and a half inch is what I really need in this bucket. So, 
We'll be cutting them down. Get about the same spot as I did on that one. Okay. So we've got our item. We'll have to do some uh, grinding and filing, get it right for welding. Okay, it's time to first start with the dip. That's an acetone, clean acetone. I'm actually gonna set this aside for this purpose. And I'm gonna get any uh, oils and also in the areas where it can seep up to your joint which I have been very remiss in the past. You're reading a little bit more about TIG welding. And getting things clean is extremely important. So, if you can hear me, well, the sound of the rain is supposed to stop tomorrow, thankfully. See what we get. Well, I got my new two opter magnifiers in my helmet now. Hopefully that'll help. Don't have my helmet dark enough. Oh. Mm, that was not good. Okay, so here's a piece here. This uh, actually, you see, we've got a bolt going through it and a captive on the back side and this this part here the bolt part of it is going to be welded to the inside of this bar leaving this post sticking out so we're going to weld that in there just need to uh, be able to clamp this in a manner it's all been cleaned those beads completely miss it Never mind. Can't see, I still can't see well enough. So right there is the best weld I've done so far on this. I'm getting a little bit better. I've got the heat up, the uh, amperage up, 72 on that, using a little smaller rod. Smaller rod works a little better. It's a little easier to control. So I'll have to remember that. And the bolt sticking out. And here's the lever arms with the slots. So the bolt goes down in the far slot and allows me to adjust a little bit of a tilt angle. A kilter would be maybe a good way to put it. Now welds were getting better. The uh, being able to see uh, is actually helpful. It's often difficult to get uh, just the right angle on these things. And uh, also to get the cuts to where they line up, I want to be trying to fill a lot, so uh, try to get the cuts to line up. And you're cutting them by hand without a jig. It can be difficult. What I did here is it's uh, fairly easy, so I can get the light on that. Yeah, you might be able to see a couple of lines. It's fairly easy to continue the line along this side and the line across this side, so you get that marking. And it's fairly easy to see with that with that line when you make a mark in the metal across. That's easy to see where that line comes off the flat surface into the corner. So that allowed me to get two corner points and then draw between the two corner points to get me a central element. And then I can measure between here and here to get it centered. And I did the same thing on both sides and same measurements and drilled a small hole 
in each side and that took a small piece of welding rod that was just the size of the drill uh, straight bingo see it lines up in both axes there so I feel pretty confident with that okay and I've got the triangular piece front piece ready to weld and see how I clamp them together use a little block at the top with a uh, angle cut on it so that I got a good face on it I can pull the two sides together and so welds have to be I mean the welds excuse me the, where they're going to join has to be very clean so you want to clean it uh, the other thing is Always be sure your surface is nice and flat. I actually had to shim up on one side, do one, and on the other is perfectly flat there. Oh, being able to see is so nice. Yeah, that's okay. Well, I still. So I started going along here, I was, I was like, but I wasn't seeing the crack there. That was kind of funny. And I realized, I'm not even on the crack. Okay, now let's go down that facing side over there. Yeah, wells weren't great, but decent for me. Another exciting day with Mr. Magoo and his TIG welding. <laughs> Mr. Magoo, it's uh, it's actually helped <laughs> having the lenses in my welding frame, but uh, my welds are still not so hot. Now here's the. Uh, I spoke before about captive nuts. Um, these are a piece that go in down inside of here. Uh, you can hear the rattle. So there's a uh, half inch nut in there. So this thing threads into. And this is for adjusting the cant angle on the uh, on the snow plow. Now I left a little bit of play in it, less than a quarter of an inch. So it has a slight bit of play. But you'll also see that this thing can has a little bit of play in this direction. Not much in that direction, but I made it to where it had a little bit of play in that direction. By the way, I ground the nut that's in there. So you see the uh, top plate over it, which keeps the top from moving. And then the back side of it, I uh, kind of pounded in and uh, tacked in this piece of ground uh, pipe, half-inch uh, steel pipe. Yeah, I know, that's not a pretty weld back there. But it'll work just fine. Those welds around that are plenty strong. So this actually, oh, and then I double nutted the end here. And I've ground it, I need to uh, paint it. I would like to blue it, but I don't want to go through all the, the setup right now. I don't have the setup for bluing. I'd much prefer that, so now I'm just gonna paint it. And I uh, double nutted it, so it allows a quarter inch drive socket to go on it and grab it a little easier. So if I adjust it, I'll just be coming in with a nut driver going, you know, one way or the other. Put a new blade in the saber saw. all my stupid mistakes here. One of the parts uh, with these plates that concerns me the most is getting them lined up. Uh, even though I can make the two sides identical, how do I be sure that they're identically lined up to where the uh, pivot point and all the other holes 
are in alignment and uh, perpendicular to the ground axis. Well, I tried uh, trying to start with the large drill, and it uh, it just causes us to move too much. There's just uh, no way that I can get that thing started with a large drill bit like that. So I went back and realigned it again. Took a, and took the uh, fine point of it all, sharpened it, and then with it lined up, went around the in inner perimeter of each one of the circles very carefully to be sure I got the very outside edge I could and was consistent on each one which gave me a nice ring and then from there I used the punch after that removed the, the board and then I can see it somewhere a little bit off so now I I start with a small drill bit in a portable portable hand drill and adjust where the center is starting This one is off the most because that's the one I started with the quarter inch. Just a real quick view of uh, some of the work that I did today on this. See this uh, cross piece in here? Now you see the uh, circular mark. There's where the indexing piece goes in to hold it and then beyond this these tabs here I haven't finished welding these uh, ran out of argon gas but uh, that's where a shock absorber attaches in here and goes up to a mount there so it's a spring and a shock absorber anyhow this end piece here that's the part that swivels see the pivot and it's actually going to have some form of a UHMW uh, bearing kind of tape in there so anyway, that works pretty slick. It's got the big bushings in it, three-quarter inch bolt, pretty massive. I mean, this piece alone weighs like 30 pounds. Big old piece of C-channel here. I decided to bolt it on because it would make it easier if I ever had to replace things. It would make it easier to paint. It's just easier to, it was harder to do. Uh, five sixteenths inch bolts. I actually went and uh, threaded each one of these holes. It's very difficult trying to get the alignment just exact because I wanted the, uh, you know, this to go in the angle just right. And it seems to be really good. I'm I'm pretty pleased with it. So things are in good shape. It's just taking a lot longer than I expected. Looks good. Looks good. I'm loving it. Y'all come back now. You hear? Part three. We'll be putting it all together. See the pivots, how the spring and the shocks work, and how these things all work together in the snowplow. All right, cheers, signing off. Hasta la projecto.